I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. This is the easy way of rush removal. All I have to do is wait. I never have been that patient, and I like to have multiple projects going at any one time. So while I've got the auger bit in the tube de-rusting, I've also had this saw blade in the bath of vinegar sitting overnight, and it's really in bad shape. This is severely rusted, but it's a carbide blade, so the carbide tips aren't rusted. I don't know why carbide doesn't rust. Something about the chemistry. But knowing that I can remove the rust and salvage the blade makes it worthwhile. Besides that, UK Tony asked me about sharpening a carbide blade, and this is the carbide blade that I have that I can sharpen. So I thought I'd take a few minutes and clean it up. I have diamond plates, and I have uh, diamond abrasive tools, but I don't have a diamond file, so I spent a few dollars and ordered one off eBay. But it's coming from Hong Kong, so it's going to take about a month or two to get here. Now I'm not willing to wait overnight for this thing to happen, so I put it in the vinegar and I'm also going after it with brushes and other implements of destruction. After soaking about eight hours in vinegar, the rust on this blade is coming off pretty quickly. This is just a little brass wire brush. I don't like to use steel brushes on carbide because even though carbide is incredibly hard, it is brittle and you can chip the edges. I'm not up on all the chemistry. But for some reason, certain parts of the blade rust more tenaciously than others. Couldn't tell you why, just notice that it does it. Don't know if it's an alloy issue or just that that part of the blade was sitting out in the rain longer. I'm always surprised that people pay for tools and then don't take care of them. Most of this stuff comes because I bought a, a box at an auction and the box has been exposed to the weather or the tools inside were left outside. Uh, quite often workshops are not exactly climate controlled. I know my old one was out in the barn. There wasn't any heat in the winter other than me running a wood stove. And that actually causes more problems because heating and cooling makes condensation. And the condensation just accelerates rusting. But I would go through and in the fall I would wax up everything and just leave the wax on as a thick coating. I wouldn't polish it off. I just waxed it up with paste wax. And then in the spring, or various times through the winter if I needed to use this, this particular tool, I would polish up the wax on the surface and clean off what I needed to clean off. Use the tool and then when I put it back, put more wax on it. Found that that kept my tools a lot better. Keeping your tools in a toolbox or a drawer works too. Just having it so the air doesn't get to it helps keep it from rusting. Well that's one side. This is the other side. This is how it used to look. And this is the side after going over it with a wire brush after night sitting in vinegar. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. One thing I would love to have in my shop is running water. I have a source for water. I have a little tap off the 
water softener that I can get water to cool tools while I'm grinding them or something. But I don't have a sink. Being able to wash stuff off in a sink would be really handy. As it is, I have to go upstairs and use the kitchen sink, which involves other issues. Cleanliness being one, I have to be very careful to not contaminate the kitchen with all this junk that comes off the blades. Now the other thing you're going to notice is my skin is going to be rusty. I normally would be wearing rubber gloves doing this, but I realized that I was in the middle of the project and hadn't put the rubber gloves on. Now a smart man would go and put the rubber gloves on now knowing that it's just going to get worse. And since I intend to be smart, I think that's what I'm going to do. Now, how much time am I spending on this saw blade? And what is the value of my time? Well, this is a worst case example. This is a badly rusted saw. And it takes a lot more work to get a badly rusted saw cleaned up than it would with one with just a little bit of surface rust on it. But in the end, I can say, well, I can buy another carbide saw blade for 10 or 12 bucks and have a brand new fresh sharp saw blade ready to go. And that's fine if I want to invest my money in, in new saw blades and say, okay, whatever I had invested in this thing, which in this particular case, I'm pretty sure it was nothing. And just toss it. There's a certain amount of satisfaction being able to say, yeah, I made that work. And I also get a lot of enjoyment out of showing you guys how it does work. And what you can do, even with one that is in bad a shape as this one. And I'm not using exotic tools. I mean, maybe a brass wire brush is exotic to some people, but you could use a Brillo pad or anything that's abrasive. You could take a file and use it like a scraper. take a, a cloth or in this case a piece of paper towel and scrub it although it's going to be pretty slow. Any of those methods will work. I think this blade is going to require some more soaking. Because this little spot right here is being really resistant. But I'm going to cheat. Because cheating is fun. I'm going to use some of my other tools to remove this particular section of rust right here, which is more resistant. And also this batch of vinegar is about a year and a half old. I think it's getting a little bit old. Okay, with that de-rusted saw blade on there, this is, uh, let's see, I'm going to unplug this, make sure I don't get my fingers caught in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twenty-two tooth saw blade.
it should cut right through this piece of wood. But these teeth have been on this saw for a long time, so they're probably pretty dull. I just have to see how well it does. Same number of teeth, steel blade after it's been sharpened. Carbide, dull. Steel blade, sharpened. Carbide isn't magical. It is much more wear resistant and it holds an edge longer. Configuration is slightly different. But when you're cutting wood and you really want to do a good job, it's more important to have it sharp than what the material is. Now we'll see what this one does after it gets sharpened. I'm going to keep this up on the shelf here just as a comparison test between prior to sharpening and after. So when that diamond file shows up, we'll give it a shot with the diamond file, see if we can tune it up a bit. It's going to take about a month for the file to get here. So in the meantime, we'll go on to other projects. But if you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.